All right. For ones that we can't do simple manipulation, we're going to have to actually go and do integration by substitution. And so here what we're going to have to do is we're going to be given some integral of a value and we're going to have to choose a piece of it and we're going to call that u. And then what we have to do is we're going to have to take and find the derivative of u and that's going to be basically, you know, our when we get it done, we're going to end up uh, finding uh, u prime of x dx. And so, you know, it's going to be our u of x and then it's going to be the u prime of x dx. <clears throat> and then what happens is that is what usually is going to be this piece. So there's going to be a u and this is our du. Okay, so think of this as du instead of, you know, just a u prime. It's either u or u prime, however you want to look at it. And we're going to have those two pieces. And then what's going to happen is this piece goes away and it's going to be kind of our du part, this piece is going to be replaced by u. So it's going to be really the integral of u du. <clears throat> and that's kind of what we're showing here in integration by substitution here. So for a product function f with respect to x, that is of the form g of u of x times u prime of x, that is a composite function times the derivative of the inside function, the antiderivative is, now we're going to have the integral of f of x dx is equal to the integral of g of u of x times u prime of x, you know, that's the u prime of x, and then our dx. And so this piece kind of goes into one part, and our uh, u of x goes into the other part, and that gives us the integral of g of u du. Okay, so that's kind of inside outside function stuff. And so how does that work? <clears throat> well, if we need to uh, take the antiderivative of this function, we have to look at the two pieces, you know, and we're going to have to decide, well, which one are we going to call the u, and then which part are we going to call the rest of it? Well, what we're going to do in this case is we're going to say, okay, well, this one we're going to say e to the 2x plus 5x, this here piece, is going to be our u. Now, if we take the derivative of this, what do we get? Well, we get 2e to the 2x plus 5. And so that's our derivative after we take that derivative. And notice, that's what this piece is. And so that's u prime. And so what we have is our integral of this and this original piece is dx. We can now substitute our u and du. Well, this is going to be u. So now it becomes u cubed. And this is our other piece, which is this piece. And so that becomes du. So we've converted this whole nasty looking thing into just u, cu u cubed du. Now, can we take that der uh, antiderivative? Sure. Well, it's going to be u to the fourth over four plus c. Now we have to go and back substitute in. What was u? Well, u we said was e squared, e to the two x rather, plus five x. And so we go back in and that's now e to the two x plus five x all to the fourth, all over four plus c. And again, this is just the general antiderivative. We're not finding the specific one. We're just saying it's plus c. So that's kind of how we do it. We make something complex into something very simple that we can easily take the antiderivative of and then back substitute in and get our final answer. <clears throat> what about this one? Well, here, what we can say is, well, we're going to let the inside piece be our u. And the derivative of that is what? Well, that's just going to be 3. Okay, so what happens this time we actually have to add some pieces to our thing because we don't have any threes in here. So what do we do? Well, we're going to say our u is this piece, our du is this piece times our dx. And so we have to find a 3dx in this. Well, we don't have a 3dx, so we're going to add a 3 here. But if we multiply by 3, we also have to multiply by 1 third. And usually this piece here goes out here. We usually say, okay, well, that's just going to be a one-third. It's just a, 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 a constant. So we just bring it out front so we don't have to worry about it. And so then we'd have 3x minus 7, the quantity squared, times 3dx. This gets replaced with du. This gets replaced with u squared. And we still have our one-third out in front. Like I said, usually, again, that's out in front. It's not in here. <clears throat> and then we just have, well, u squared du. That's just u to the third over 3. And plus c, and it still times that one third here, okay? Now, what do we have to do? Well, we have to get rid of that u, put that back in there, and so it's going to be, well, one third times that one third is going to be a nine on the bottom, and then it's three x minus seven to the third on top, and so that gives us our piece here. So that's how we're doing that one. Sometimes you might actually have to make this, uh, this is, might be a one third here, and you'd have to multiply by a three here. Depending on the problem, it's, they're all going to be different, so you kind of have to play around with the values. <clears throat> All right, what about this one? Well, here we want to write the antiderivative of this. So here we see we have 3x squared. Here we have 3x. 
<clears throat> x cubed rather. And so what we have to do is we have to get and say, well, let's use this piece because I know if I take the derivative of that, I get a three x squared and then zero here. And so if I do that, guess what? That's up here. So <clears throat> I'm gonna say u is equal to x cubed minus seven. The derivative is three x squared. And now what do I do? Well, that's gonna give me <clears throat> one over u. And then it's gonna be this part here is just du. And so it's one over u du, which is just the ln of u. And we take that antiderivative plus c. Now we have to plug in back x cubed minus three, uh, x cubed minus seven into our u, and then we get our final value, okay? So the hardest part of all these are gonna be deciding what do we use for u, and then after that, you know, taking the derivative and getting what the uh, derivative of that is, and then plugging it in so we can actually make it work, okay? So that's kind of what this section is more about here. Now let's look at some more. <clears throat> so here we have 3x squared and then we have ln of x cubed plus 2. Well, I'm looking at the inside function here first because that usually, if we have an ln or a sine or something, that inside piece is usually going to be our key. That's going to be u. And so if I think of that as u, what's the derivative of this? Well, it's going to be 3x squared. So that is okay because I say, well, that's u, that's du. So I can rewrite this as ln of u. And then if I put this on the end, then that's the three x squared dx. And that's what I have for du. And so then I get ln of u, du. Not hard, we can do that. And that's gonna be the x times ln of x minus x. But since we're using u's, it's gonna be u, ln of u minus u plus c. And then we have to replace one, two, three u's back with our x cubed plus two. So that's gonna give us x cubed plus two times ln of x cubed plus two minus x cubed plus two plus c. Now, if we wanted to, we could, you know, distribute that one and, and make it, you know, without the extra parentheses there. But for that, I would say that's good enough. All right, here's one with the sign. All right, so again, what did I say with ln? I would use what's inside of here for my u, okay? And so if that's u, du is gonna be what? Three, okay? And I look down here, yep, sure enough, that's what they said. That's my u, that's my du. So that's gonna be three times dx is what I need. And if that's three times dx, then I look up here, do I have a three times dx? No, but I've got this six here. And so what, what am I gonna do? Well, I'm gonna split that uh, six into pieces. And so what it looks like down here is, I'm gonna say, okay, well, this comes down here. I'm gonna say, well, I'm gonna keep that two. And then I'm gonna have uh, this here piece. I'm gonna have the times of three dx, okay? And so then after that, what that ha happens is then I'm going to have to say, well, okay, well, I have that two out there, that three. Well, this is my du. And then I'm going to have two sine u. Okay, so that's going to be how I kind of split that one apart. And so then what I'm going to have to do, then I think they left off a piece here because we still have plus five. And so what we're going to have to do is say then plus five. So then it's going to be plus five five. And so when I take the antiderivative, it's going to give me, because uh, we just have sine u du with a two here, so that two comes out in front. And the uh, antiderivative of sine is a negative cosine, so it's negative two cosine u. And then I still have plus five x, because I have that five still there. They sort of forgot that. And then plus c. And so now what I have to do is substitute my u back here as 3x minus 7. So it's a minus 2 cosine 3x minus 7 plus 5x. Oh, they remembered it now. And then plus c. So they kind of forgot about it here overall. But, you know, they remember to bring it back in at the end. But up here, you know, we still have that plus 5. So we have to remember to do that in our problems. So uh, sometimes I've noticed our book has some uh, little missing pieces. All right. So let's stop there. We'll come back for more.